The Equipment Enhancement event has rolled around again, and this time it comes in the form of Collaboration Fest. Just like the last unique event, the Airy, this event features its own special list of equipment with their own unique abilities. But this one boasts a far greater assortment of featured weapons, as there are 24 different weapons that can obtain an ability that it normally would be unable to do so. The Airy only featured 15, but the downside is that many of these weapons have been consolidated and organized into really plain arrangements. While it does make my job easier, it loses out on a bit of the mystery. Regardless, 24 different weapons means that players may have to be selective. If you try to enhance all 24 weapons, you may not have the time to enhance your other, perhaps more powerful equipment. But before I go further, let's review the basics. What is an Equipment Enhancement Event? Here, players climb up a 10-floor tower and unlock some additional enhancements for their equipment. Though most of the little additions are minuscule, like an increase by 1%, some of the rarer abilities can increase a stat by a whopping 20% or so. It's definitely not an event to miss, so let's get into that. The climb is not a challenge for any player, including those who are free to play. Even beginners will find themselves climbing it at an easy rate, with the better login bonuses that Gumi has given them. If you are a beginner, make sure to watch my video covering the beginner login bonus ticket, as it covers the viability of the possible units at this time. And with that covered, let's get into the video. Out of the 24 featured equipment, which one should you prioritize first? There are three unique abilities here. One that raises the magic stat for a single weapon by 60%, one that raises the attack and magic by 40% for two weapons, and everything else receives a 60% boost to attack. By the way, in case you were wondering, so long as you participate completely in this collaboration festival, you'll be able to get every weapon here. This includes the <laughs> extremely powerful Angel Slayer with a whopping 180 attack stat. <laughs> Definitely very exciting. Without question, absolutely no drawbacks here. All right, first off, we'll begin with the only equipment that has its very own one-of-a-kind unique ability, the Martial Rod. A ordinary rod with a 100 magic stat. This weapon can get a 60% boost in magic through the event. If you're a beginner, enhance it. If you're not, don't. Unfortunately, the martial rod has nothing else to bring to the table other than pure stats, and 60% isn't going to make it used more by players of a larger amount of better equipment. Next, Warblade. A 106 attack katana boasting a possible 60% boost in attack. Only for beginners. It has no bonuses alongside it, so it's very susceptible to being overshadowed. You're better off enhancing one of your better equipment if you have any. The Cote du Azur SOW has an incredible attack stat of 10. A 60% boost is not going to save it. Don't cast it aside so easily though. It comes with a built-in lightning element and an extremely powerful magic killer plus. Guess what most machine monsters are weak to? Unfortunately, it's outclassed by Sparky, no not you, even with its unique capabilities and variance range. So if you don't have any form of machine killer, make sure to set this one aside just in case. You never know when you might need it. The EMP grenade has an attack stat of 45 and a possible boost by 60%. Any unit holding it can use the ability EMP, increasing their physical damage against machine monsters by 100%. The problem? It only lasts for one turn. As such, I can't recommend it for anyone. Linebacker G87 MSGL is a 100 attack stack gun with the fire element imbued into it. It just so happens to be the strongest fire elemental gun in the game, so make sure to put that on your list. The Zenith ZAP is a gun with 30 attack, but surely it must be special somehow, right? Well, it beats out the Kote, the Azur SOW in terms of pure attack, but loses in terms of usefulness. It has the lightning element, but it doesn't have a machine killer. Instead, it has an 80% chance to paralyze your opponent. I, I, I can't even recall a time in Final Fantasy Brave Axius where I thought, man, if only I could inflict paralysis. The Fierce Bow. A 110 attack stat wind bow with a little HP regeneration built into it as well. Unfortunately, I can't see a reason why you'd use an attack stat bow. Anyone who uses a physical bow unit will most likely have a better bow anyways. And bows are two-handed, so it's not like you can prepare a spare for any reason. Kogo Rasumaru is the weakest dark elemental katana in the game. 
but on the other hand, there aren't that many dark katanas in the game. In fact, as of this video's release, there are only four of them, including this one. One katana is only available during a limited time event, while the other two are Super Trust Master rewards. i definitely enhance this one. By the way, I just happen to have that other katana, so I don't need to upgrade this personally. Metal Pipe. No. Why? I mean, if you get fired from the summon, you can give him 30% more attack, but why would you use a 35 attack stat weapon instead of literally anything else? Scarlet Roses gets a 40% boost in both attack and magic. Fitting, seeing that it has 60 in both attack and magic. We don't have a hybrid damage dealer that relies on a gun though. But since it's an earth elemental gun, it's definitely unique. The only other one is available through story mode, and it takes a while to get. Granted, it's not as strong as the other one. Nowhere near close to that in fact. But you may as well enhance this one because it's literally one of two earth guns. Take Mikazuchi is a lightning elemental dagger that does not look like a dagger at all. If I attack stat of 55, it's strangely the strongest lightning dagger around. Enhance it. Someone might need it in Dark Visions. Crew Oaf is a 105 attack stat katana. Just like Warblade, ignore it if you have anything better. Iron Will is a greatsword that has a low amount of attack, but gives your unit a boost in defense by 15%. I'd say no for everybody except for beginners who are trying to clear that parameter challenge quest. Dragoon Lance? No, we get better spears almost every other event. Type 3 Fists. You know, this is actually pretty funny. It has the exact same effect as a metal pipe, with a possible confusion effect. So they literally took two metal pipes and welded them together. And it's still weaker than two metal pipes. Well, sure, you can hold this one in one hand and then hold a second one in the second hand. Why am I trying to defend this? Don't enhance this. Ancient Overlord boosts the critical hit rate by 20%. But if you hadn't noticed, no one talks about critical hits in this game. Strangely enough, critical hits aren't important in this Final Fantasy game. Thus, don't bother with this weapon. GE64 can get a 40% boost in both attack and magic but it's geared more for a magic unit than a physical one. It does have a fire element imbued into it, but once you're more experienced, you will find alternatives to this. Don't enhance this unless you don't have that many fire weapons. Rico's Combat Gloves is a decent pair of earth fists. I'd enhance them. UVK-13 is a weak gun with a normal machine killer on it. Killers are always useful when they're needed. Ah, that sounds weird. But if you have enough machine killers, don't bother. CS Wraith 225R is a gun that increases your limit burst gauge by 1 each turn. 1 limit burst crystal isn't that impressive, and there aren't that many gun wielding units that would benefit greatly off that bonus limit burst gauge fill rate, instead of equipping a better weapon. The U24 Zabijak has a unique ability that lets a unit hold a second gun. Not quite sure how that works, nor why your unit is forbidden from doing so in the first place. I mean, it's not that big. But anyways, beginners would appreciate it. Maybe. For whatever reason, Gumi hasn't been giving us Bowie knives for free anymore, so this is a decent, if not weak, alternative. The Little Genero is a gun that can boost a unit's health by 20%. That's always appreciated. But it also has Man Eater, increasing physical damage against humans by 50%. Man Eater is rather rare, so this is invaluable. This is definitely one of the most prioritized equipment that you should upgrade from this event. Dragoon Tyrant is an 84 attack stat spear, nothing else. Same as everything similar, only upgraded if you have nothing better. Angel Slayer is a powerful two-handed sword with a whopping 180 attack, the same as Hyo's Super Trustmaster reward. Its description says that it is a truly baneful sword from another world. It has rent angelic flesh numerous times and serves as a reminder of sinners past. The sword is said to have entered the hands of a battle maiden after she defeated a powerful angel in a long and grueling battle. The veracity of these claims, however, cannot be verified. Rumors also state that even the mightiest of gods is powerless before it. With a possible 60% bonus boost in attack, this is going to make any unit boast an incredible attack stat. In fact, 
Forget S tier, this belongs in the Stratosphere tier. The Stratosphere? The Stratosphere? Anyways, it belongs outside of this tier list. Now, that was a lot to cover, so I'll sum it up here. Upgrade the little general. Then judge and do whatever you want with the rest according to your equipment box. Then upgrade the rest of your equipment as much as you can. If you want to be that one cool kid who rents expensive cars just because they want to look rich, enhance the Angel Slayer. If there's a featured equipment that's not on this list, it's bad. While this event seems rather normal in the first place, it can actually teach us quite a lot outside of the world. A lot of these weapons are low in stats, low in abilities. They don't seem very useful at first glance. But if you dig a little deeper, you can find the diamonds hidden in the rough. Not everything should be judged at first glance, just like how Angel Slayer isn't the best weapon here, or the Cote de Azur SOW is the weakest weapon here. In fact, the inverse is probably true. So we have to look deeper, look outside, look at people a lot more better than how we normally do so. We shouldn't jump to conclusions, and we should take our time when judging other people. By the way, you can increase your chances of finding a unique ability by bringing along certain units. They all happen to be collaboration units, so that's an incentive to summon on that banner. Make sure to check my video that covers the Trustmaster reward and Super Trustmaster rewards of those units to help you decide if you should summon them. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and give it a like. Comment below if you have any questions, and the best of luck in finding those abilities.